just a big thing of carrots, right? Um, or a big uh, container of cut up, we cut up all of our fruits as well for the week. Um, not all fruits do that well, but we just do it because it's a little bit more convenient, but we have all the apples cut up. And then she can just go put in the amount of grams that she's supposed to have. So we, do, we, we are a little bit more dialed in with the macros and stuff like that, but she'll measure out how much she's supposed to have for that in the container the night before. So we did a lot of prepping over here on Sunday, but there's still just a slight amount of prepping during the week. But we put them in big containers, so they don't, but it's very time consuming. If you put them all in little containers, measure that all out, that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of fridge space. So that's one way to do it. Another way is to do it twice a week, um, where you just plan for four days at a time. Same idea, you're planning out four days, and I know Thursdays, so I'm gonna go get my groceries here, right? And then I'm gonna do that same thing twice a week. So it's only gonna take you about two hours on Sundays to do it, because it's gonna, then you'll go through it, but you're gonna have to find another two hours during the week. So it really matters on what your schedule is, what, how much spousal help you have as well, or kids help that you have to be able to do this, to make it, figure out where you're fit in there. But there's the option you go once a week, twice a week, Try to do it every single day. Once you have that one bad day, that one bad day can lead in a four or five bad days. So I say you probably need to be at least prepped for three or four days ahead of time on the meal prep side. Um, cutting up all the things you can. Have it as simple and ready to go as you can. So even if I'm not, I we, depending on what meals we're having, but if we're doing a stir fry, we're gonna cut up a lot of our vegetables and our meats um, at the same time. We'll cook our meats ahead of time because meat will spoil a little bit quicker on us. But our vegetables we won't. If we're gonna do a stir fry, we'll just make the stir fry that night. If we have all the vegetables cut up, we just toss them in the pan real quick. The annoying part about stir fries is cutting all the vegetables up for stir fry. So we cut them all up at the same time when we're already kind of in that meal prep mode. Um, we'll cut those all up and we'll throw the vegetables in all just at the same time. Our meats are already cooked on that Sunday, and we'll have that in like four days that works. But like so some things can be done in the moment, meaning cooking in the moment, but the more prepping can be done at once, just the better chance you're gonna follow whatever this plan is. Don't get too creative. People like will have like seven different meals in these first days, and then you have all this extra food. Like, eat the same breakfasts if you like them, or a little bit variation of them. Eat the same lunches if you like them. Dinners where probably people have the most modifications because they're eating with family a little bit more. That's okay to have like taco night here, and maybe taco night here, or however creative you got to do with the kids and stuff like that. Most kids will actually eat the same foods more often if you just like, say, hey, this is what you eat. And my mom always, my philosophy, my mom always told me about nutrition. I started coaching. She's like, I don't know why you think everybody, all these kids get choices. It's like if you, when my mom grew up, it was whatever we put on the damn table. I was like, that's a good call. Like, I don't remember ever saying, Mom, that's what I want tonight. It was whatever I walked up to the table and was sitting there. So, so that idea, like, kind of the thing, they don't have to have as many choices that, as they, they want to have. It's like, yeah, you can eat it or not. It's still in the fridge if you don't want it, but go, you just don't get any food besides that. So, this is not me trying to give parenting advice because I am not a parent. So, it's just the little things I remember growing up, my mom was just more along the lines of like, you just don't get any choice. You can either eat or you can't eat. So, I was like, well, I always ate it. Um, breakfast tips. So we'll go through each individual meal a little bit quicker now. Did you guys just ask me any questions you have along here? So for breakfast, I say drink a, before every meal. I really like you drink a, a glass of cold water as soon as you wake up in the morning, like ice cold water. It instantly already puts these triggers in our body that kind of slows down, like makes us less hungry. It's pretty much what it does. So ice cold glass of water upon waking, before you, like while you're starting to make, make breakfast and stuff. Why should it be cold? Um, so ice cold water, it just has a tendency to make um, satiate um, a thirst a little bit more. So it really just has to do with satiation. So meaning like it's just making it so you feel a little less hungry. It doesn't have to be ice cold. It could be like for the other meals I usually don't uh, care as much. I just find in the morning because you've been eight hours of, of like uh, being really thirsty, if you satiate that, that drinking sensation right away, you'll be a le less hungry because you have like eight hours of not eating. And you kind of, some people wake up ravenous like I do, like I'm just super hard, hungry after not eating for eight hours. Um, and ice cold water will quench that thirst a little bit more, and all of a sudden my hunger goes down a little bit quicker. Doesn't have to be. I know like um, Nate's wife, she doesn't really drink ice cold water, um, and so like it's just drinking water is fine too. Like it depends on, on your lifestyle and stuff like that. Ice cold just adds a tendency to be just make you a little less thirsty or a little less hungry right away. Um, and that's why I like that upon waking because it will slow you down your desire to eat breakfast so fast. Um, fix other foods while you're cooking your breakfast. Drink black coffee, or if you drink coffee, you drink it. Try to drink it as black as possible with sugar-free creamer. Um, like lattes and stuff like that. Like that's not coffee. That's a latte. It's not really. Like, when people like I drink coffee, they tell me to drink a latte. I'm like, well, you're not drinking coffee. Coffee is just like black. Coffee is really good for you. The caffeine is good for you. Um, the a lot of the micronutrients inside of caffeine is good for you. It's when you turn them into these sugar mix mixes and stuff that's where it gets negative. Um, one percent milk, whole, whole milk with that, not bad as a creamer. If you're actually gonna do a creamer, try to do a sugar-free creamer because there's just a lot of sugar in creamers themselves. Um, so trying to lean towards either sugar-free there or putting some milk. If you have to have milk in them or like stevia sweetener drops. Yes, good. Question. So like iced coffee with like cream and a sugar-free, like just a shot of sugar-free creamer too. Is that okay? Are you making it yourself? No. 
Probably not okay. If you're making it yourself, yes. Only problem is you gotta kind of look at like even Starbucks and those like they're yeah their 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 sugar levels are a lot higher than you think so it just depends on where you're getting it from if you're making it at home I can probably guarantee that it's probably sugar free but if you're getting it from somewhere else it's probably got a lot of additives in it so that's just kind of that but what you said wasn't bad it, the stuff they had in it I just when you make it at home I can guarantee that it wasn't when you're not at home I just get those places like there's a reason it tastes way better than it tastes at home. Right? Yeah. So the reason it's so sweet is because it's actually like real sweet. Yeah. You know, you're not, they're actually not putting, they're putting in like sweeteners, but like, they're overdoing the sweeteners, so. Yeah. Now I've got to drink rice tea, okay? Actually, totally fine, yep. You have green teas, any kind of teas you want. And th those don't have to be, it's just if you are drinking it, that's what I recommend. Like if you don't have to drink coffee or teas in the morning. Caffeine does have a lot of benefits um, to it, but also too much caffeine has <coughs> a lot of negatives too. So it's like a sweet spot between 80 milligrams and 300 milligrams, depending on, on who you are. Um, but 300 milligrams is over a day, not all at once. 80 milligrams is about the sweet spot. 10, 160 is the sweet spot at one time. So um, ideas of foods, of uh, foods, um, combos. We have smoothies, scrambled eggs, um, bulletproof coffee is another good. That's where you put fat with your coffee. Um, protein, you know, I'm just listing ideas. If you, you're somebody that can eat any food at any time, just eat any food. These are just like your common breakfast foods. Uncured turkey bacons, um, sausages, if they're apple, gator, Amy Lou, which means that they're like antibiotic free sausages. Sausages have a lot of like, normal sausages have a lot of um, an, uh, antibiotics in them. So you gotta be a little careful with them because they're from a pig and they're not from the best part of a pig either. Um, eggs, egg whites. Um, Greek yogurts, cottage cheeses, veggies, you know, anything you think of. Any vegetables, name some normal ones, any fruit you can think of. And I really don't recommend fasting. Now, if it fits your lifestyle, totally fine, especially for females, it really messes with hormonal levels. So I'm not a big fan of it, but that doesn't mean that it can't fit somebody's lifestyle. Just gotta be smart with it. What you have to do if you do choose to fast in the morning, and a fast is usually I need to be fasted for about at least 12 hours for me to really consider a fast. So the time you go to bed and you wake up, you need at least to be fasted for another four hours after that, depending on how long you sleep, to, for me to count it as fasting. Otherwise, it's just that you eat a little bit later. Um, that called fasting is tough on hormonal levels um, for females for sure. Males a little bit. It really matters when I come out of that fast, how hungry am I? If I'm starving, I probably shouldn't be fasting. If I'm like, okay, it's time to eat because it's time to eat, and I can eat just because it is, fine. But if you come out of it and be like, food, you shouldn't be fasting. That's kind of the, the, my simple thing. You should not be really hungry coming out of fast. You should just be as time to eat now, right? And you, we can talk more in depth if anybody has any questions. I have a question on the I'm about the smoothies. What do you think of that daily harvest? Is that okay oh, or not? I'm totally fine. Yep, I used to do daily harvest. The smoothies? Before. Yeah. Is that okay? Then? Because you said without fruit. And they have the... Oh, that should say fruit. Sorry, with fruit. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I think I just, I missed that. that should and say the almond milk, okay, the thing, because I've only tried to stay away from like the regular, like fat free milk, mm -hmm. and I try to drink almond milk. Is that okay? Almond, most milks in general are okay. I'm actually a little bit more towards, I've always been a little bit more towards dairy milks because you get a little bit more micronutrients from them. However, yeah. Almond milks, coconut milk, all those things, no, no issue with them. So that daily harvest, those are okay to eat? Yep, daily even, harvest like, the, even those bowls are Yeah, okay. most, most things from daily harvest, um, I can't, I'm not, the pizzas, I probably wouldn't do the pizzas. No. But yeah, yeah, most other things from daily harvest are pretty good. Okay. Yep, yeah, for sure. They're good. They're, they're a nice, quick, go-to smoothie right, for sure. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, that should say with fruit. I do think you need that little bit of insulin thing. I just had a, a, a typo, so. Um, Good questions. Um, lunch tips. Uh, again, ice cold water, because I'm trying to like, most people haven't drink enough, wa drank enough water by that time, just helps slow your hunger. What we're trying to do before a meal, if you guys ever run into this, you run into a meal and you're just like, I'm so hungry, I can't wait. I'm trying to slow down that I am so hungry, I can't wait. Because if we can slow down that I'm so hungry, I can't wait, we're gonna make better choices. But if I'm like so hungry, it usually comes down to like, I'm really thirsty or I went way too long between eating and that's another thing. But like I'm just really, I'm, I'm probably thirsty and I haven't taken time to drink anything. Ice cold water, some kind of a water, about eight ounces of drinking that before you do anything will just help out a lot and slow you down. Um, try not to have it more six, uh, once more than six hours after breakfast if possible, just because we're trying to control insulin levels. So insulin levels is literally like one of our body's ways to regulate our blood glucose. If we can control our blood glucose, and keep it steady, we're gonna have really good energy throughout the entire day, which then helps with the calorie burn. The big issue we have is the spikes. You feel good energy, that way, right? And that's what we're trying to do. That's why I'm not a big fan of like um, breakfast coffees that are really sugar-based, because they shoot you way up, but then you'll find it two hours later, sit down here, right? So we're just trying to keep that along the board. So the longer we go between meals, the lower that glucose drops. And then we have a meal that spikes up. So we wanna keep that, those meals a little bit more consistently.
possibility, if possible, again, I understand everybody has different schedules, and I can't put this into everybody's schedule, and we can talk about anybody individual schedule that needs to talk to me about them, but that is like some best advice. Salads, proteins, light on drip, just be light on dressings. Dressings are good, you gotta have dressings, you need the fats. However, just be light on them and make sure they're not not that covered, not the sugar. I would be a bigger fan of like avocado oil drizzling that over there with some, with some vinegar or um, drizzling over some olive oil would be much better than most salad dressings you're gonna find out there um, because those are just a little too sweet, but there are some good ones out there, you just gotta kinda dig around. Um, tacos go over great because you can make those for many days in a row. Any type of protein is great for lunches, hard block cheeses. Again, I talked about cheeses, the harder the cheese, the better. Fish and seafood. Any fruits and veggies. I'm gonna say that every single meal, no matter what, you can have fruits and veggies almost unlimited right now. Like as we get closer to like one time I really get strict on how many fruits and vegetables you're eating is you get very close to your final weight loss goal. And we have to really dial in your carbohydrate numbers. But right now we do not have to worry about that at all. Um, you could probably we just want full. We want full and we want that wholeness to come from fruits and vegetables. And then the other stuff is stuff we have to have. We have to have proteins to make sure that we are getting enough muscle rebuild. We have to have some fats, but I mean, protein and carb carbohydrates and fruits give you a lot of that stuff already because even in like avocados give you a lot of fats. So dinner tips, um, try to eat before 7 p.m. If, if possible, like that's kind of the sweet spot. Of course, I don't know what time people go to bed. So if you go to bed at like midnight, 7 p.m. is probably not that big a deal. Um, if you go to bed at 8 p.m. like I do, um, at 8.30, I don't want to eat after. I don't want to probably eat within an hour of bedtime just because the digestion is strictly all it is. Is it's hard to digest food while you're sleeping, um, and so like it's better for the system not to do that, that much digesting. You'll sleep better without a huge digestion at night. So if you do have to eat later, just try to make things like um, berries are really easy to digest. Not a lot of vegetables are easy to digest, so you don't want to have those too late at night. It's a bigger thing. Potatoes would be a vegetable that is easy to digest if it's been broken down into like mashed potato style. Um, fajitas, burritos, pastas are good examples. Uh, any meats, fish, beans. Um, beans are. Okay, the big thing with beans are you don't want to have a ton of beans, there's a lot of carbohydrates. We're not negative carbohydrates for any beans here. That's where fruits and vegetables are all carbohydrates, but we want most of our carbs from them. So don't try to overeat beans, and beans have to be really cooked. Otherwise, your body doesn't digest it very well. You always thought you got like the gassiness from beans, that becomes because the, they didn't get like cooked as well. And they also have to be soaked beforehand to make sure that they are digestible by the system. Um, otherwise, they lead up, let off phytotoxins as well. So you do have to be a little careful with beans and how many beans that you are eating during a day. Just kind of keep those a little bit more limited. Um, if you don't have to have beans, like beans are not the end all be all for that. But if you like them, totally fine. Just be smart about how much you have of those. Any fruits and vegetables. One thing I said, I talked about this already, no apples at, in the evening. Too late at night because they um, just have a, an enzyme that can keep you a little bit more awake. Now if you go to sleep right after, it's no big deal. But like most people, it does affect them. Teas, um, green tea is an awesome way um, to give you, to, yep, you yep, go for the toy fine. Um, green tea is a feeling of, uh, can reduce the feeling of hunger. Drinking BCAs are a good way too. Ice cold water, proteins. You know, all, you guys will have a list of all these things. But Greek yogurts, all those good veggies, any veggies you can think of. Um, dessert. Um, I recommend. Yeah. So beans. I see tacos on the list. I don't have any. Is there you know a limit on how many times you should have beef in versus a chicken? Not really. The only thing I'd say with beef is the closer you can get beef to grass fed, the better it is for you. Beef has the most micronutrients of any meat out there. So it's really good for you in that sense. But there's also a lot of fat in beef. So, like um, ground beef, you want to price today, they're a little bit leaner style ground, ground beef. Usually, when I go to ground, I go to ground turkey, I don't go to ground beef. Um, so, like that taco would be like a turkey taco, would be more what I'd be using turkey meat because so it's a lot, got a lot less fat in it. Um, but steaks and ribeyes, things of that nature, are really good for you. Antibiotics, the less antibiotics, so the more grass fed, the better. But we really don't have a limit on like that. We believe saturated fats is actually, are actually good for you because your body actually utilizes saturated fats for a ton of things. We don't use unsaturated fats for very many things at all. They're just really good for fullness. We use saturated fats for ridiculous amount of hormonal processors. Um, and so, like, you know, eggs, like, I don't put a limit on eggs. I mean, there's craziness. People that eat over six eggs a day, it's probably too much egg. But like three or four eggs a day is enough, and that's more for allergy purposes than anything, because you'll get allergic to eggs after you eat way too many eggs too long. Um, so in terms of that, like you know, three to four eggs a day, so for cholesterol reasons, I'm not worried about cholesterol unless you have a serious cholesterol issue, and we can talk about that. Otherwise, actually, cholesterol is good. It goes through and breaks up the, the actual uh, saturated, the, the, the fats in the lining. Cholesterol is actually the thing that breaks up the, the uh, our arteriosclerosis of it. Um, so that's actually good for you. Um, so red meats, really no issues with those. There's a ton of creatines and other minerals in it, really good. Uh, I would just have a good balance of everything, right? So if I'm gonna 
usually for me, we'll do like, if I'm gonna do beef for dinner every day of the week, I'll probably have chicken for lunch every day or, or different one. I'm probably not gonna do beef and beef. But I never worry about if I'm having beef every single day, chicken every single day. I don't ever worry about that. I just worry about like making sure that I'm probably not eating chicken and chicken. Does that make sense? Because each one has different minerals in it. And we're trying to maximize all the minerals we can possibly get, all the nutrients you can possibly get from it. And like the same foods in the same day give you just the same nutrients, but if, you know, multiple days in a row is a big deal at all. Yep. Um, everything comes back to like, I mean, there is like, if you have certain underlying conditions, those are things we have to talk about. But most of the part, like um, everything in media, they blow up one thing or another. Like it's, if, it, if it's a big headline they can use, they're gonna make it really big. And at one time it was really bad to, to have fish oil. Like it was horrible for it, it caused cancer in men. And then like three weeks later when that article came out, they got, that company got blown up for that because they saw this thing that happened with a small population of men that already have heart attack issues. And it's like, well, that's not a good test. You're testing people that have heart attack issues, heart, heart issues already. So why would that be a study that should be for all males? You know? so, so it's just so, some of that stuff is skewed out there. Um, so let's just say no as much as there's possible. Um, if you're not really physically hungry at that time of night, or if you are physically hungry, like you had dinner and like, I just I got this crazy sweet tooth, let's try to have a little bit of fruit at that time. Um, a Greek yogurt bar could be okay, but it can become like a, a habit more than an actual need at that point. Fruit ends up being a little bit less of a habit, habit if we're going to do that. Um, fruit's really digestible is the reason I say fruit. It's sweet, but it's digestible, whereas a, a carrots at that time wouldn't be bad either. So the carrots are a little bit harder for the body to digest while we're sleeping. Um, if it's really, here's my big tip for a lot of people, if it's after 8 p.m. and you're getting hungry, um, just go to bed, realistically. It's probably you're just tired. You're getting pretty exhausted and your body's okay. I'm exhausted from the day, I'm going to use some food, to get energy to keep me awake a little bit longer. And it's probably that time, maybe I should just go to bed if I'm really hungry at this time of day. And you'll start to figure that out. I mean, that's not always possible for everybody to do, but it is a tip that most people don't ever think about. Like, your body could just be telling you, I'm, I'm sleepy and I only need energy because I need to stay. You're trying to force me to stay up a couple more hours, so. Alcohol. Um, it's probably the big last, last big slide. I think everything else is uh, from there. Um, alcohol. So alcohol does put the brakes on fat loss. So what this idea is, is you can drink alcohol during this challenge, it's up to you. It just depends on how much of the results you're looking for. But the big thing that alcohol does is it pretty much puts like a giant uh, brakes on your fat loss, meaning like what? fat is metabolized in the liver, alcohol is metabolized in the liver. So if you drink a lot of alcohol, literally it has to go through and try to um, metabolize inside the liver, and it, so it has to stop fat loss because alcohol is a poison. And so when that poison all of a sudden it's like, okay, I need to stop because this poison has to be broken down so I can get out of the system and it'll stop metabolizing fat. So it puts a break, break on fat loss for somewhere between four to eight hours depending on how much alcohol you're drinking. So if you can go without it, try to go without it. If you can't go without it, just try to drink a little bit less. Try to keep it to one day a week if you can. Um, helps out a lot. The less days that we stop things, the better. If I, if I drink every single night, I'm putting breaks on every single day. But if I drink like just on Saturdays, I would only put the breaks on my fat loss for like a one hour, like a four hour window or eight hour window on a weekend. No big deal there. A little bit bigger deal if it's happening every day. Execute the plan, right? Everything we just went through, just simple, like, there's nothing, there's not, this is not rocket science, there's nothing special about what we're doing here. Um, consistency and accountability is what we're special at, helping you guys be able to consistent and accountable. Um, eating real foods, mostly plants, not too much. Here's a quick realistic expectations. If you're strict to your debt and dedicated, you're working out three times a week um, with us, um, you're hitting 100% of your workouts, you don't really make excuses, you don't eat, eat, drink alcohol, you can definitely see six to eight pounds, sometimes even more, but I'm putting a realistic expectation, six to eight pounds of body fat loss, you'll probably gain a two to three pounds of muscle inside of there too. So you might lose about eight pounds on the scale, but you've gained muscle during that time, which actually makes you leaner, close to better. Drop one or two dress sizes. And if you keep trying, consistently just always working at it, but you're not perfect, you um, eat out a maximum of one time a week, uh, follow the basic uh, habits and rules of challenge. You're hitting 95% of your workouts. Um, you don't have blow-up days or days where you just take a whole day off and just eat horrible. Um, you alcohol one time a week. Um, you can lose three to four pounds. Could be more depending on the person, obviously. One to two pounds of muscle gain during that time. Probably drop about one dress size. Which in 28 days, no matter what, either of those is really good. If you took that over 10 months, you would have an amazing, crazy transformation over that amount of time. So it's just the more realistic meditation, the more effort you put into it, the more results that happen, the less effort, the less results. Like we get people that are like, well, I, I, I joined your challenge, but I didn't lose any weight, but you never did the work, so like it doesn't really matter if you joined the challenge or not. Discipline is choosing between what you want to do, what you want now and what you want most. Uh, and the last thing we're gonna talk about is a clean slate. So this is the big thing for everybody in general, like any part of your life. When shit goes wrong, like when things go wrong, it's okay. It's gonna happen, you're gonna have a bad day. Clean slate. We're not gonna take the whole day off and eat horrible throughout the day. If I have a bad breakfast, 
by the time I get up to lunch, I'm gonna have a good meal again. And just start eating back on home. Don't punish myself for that day. If I have a bad Tuesday, it doesn't mean I have to wait till next Monday to start again, right? Um, so just take that next clean slate it right away, wipe it clean, okay, cool. I'm gonna start that next meal the best meal I can. I'm gonna be right back on track. Literally the next meal, instead of taking a full day off or a week off of food, just take that clean slate. I guess any specific questions, otherwise that's all I have to go through with you guys today. What about pasta? Is there a, should we like a whole grain or regular is fine? Um, whole grain's fine. Pasta is, bit, just make sure on your plate that we had up here, that pasta, is, or pasta or rice is within the same category. Um, so we're looking at our plate, it's like this part, right? Just make sure it's not too much of the plate. But whole grains, I would say leaning towards whole grains in general on all rices and pastas and stuff is always gonna be better because the fiber helps you digest, not really digest, but it helps your insulin not spike. Whereas like a white rice or a pure white pasta um, or certain noodles, they will spike your insulin a lot faster. So whole grains are gonna be better. The darker the color of the noodle, the better it's gonna be for in, in a sense, better for you in terms of fiber purposes. They have the same nutrient basis, but they have a little bit more fiber. Like the Ezekiel bread? Ezekiel bread, yeah. If you like that sprout bread, any kind of sprout bread, it kind of fits in that Ezekiel bread category. Um, pretty like, easier to, to, to do, um, especially if you're somebody that eats bread. Ezekiel breads or sprout breads are totally fine. I thought the only breads I really recommend are in that category. Here's a, a good tip for bread is if I take bread and I can smush it and it doesn't pop back into place, it's not a good bread. If I can smush the bread and it kind of tries to regain its form again, that's a bread that's got a lot of nutrients in it and it's pretty healthy for you. It doesn't mean it won't mess with your carbohydrate levels a little bit, but it's not bad for you at all. It's a good question though. Like that's what they may go over is like those other kind of carbs. Like we want to keep them to a minimum. Potatoes, and the potatoes and sweet potatoes fit in this category. They don't fit in this category. Which is weird to people because we actually consider Potatoes and um, sweet potatoes, very nutrient dense. As long as you don't cover them in sour creams, butter, or not butter, a little bit of butter, okay? sour creams, or anything like that may be loaded with baked potato, or you're taking sweet potatoes and covering them with brown sugar. As long as you're not doing that, there's so many minerals and good carbohydrates in there, you can actually eat a decent amount of them a day. Me and my fiance have sweet potatoes for lunch, and we have mashed potatoes for dinner. Um, what about like spring? I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah. I mean, just so, like a little bit. Yeah, I would rather you go use real butter, very okay? real butter. Because I can't believe it's not butter, it's actually a margin. It fits in that polyunsaturated fat category. So it's actually being crazy, creating a lot of free radicals in our system. So it would be better for you guys. Margarine, no. Margarine is a, is a hydrogenated oil, but it fits in that polyunsaturated fat category. Real butter, so if you guys know what Kerrygold butter is, it's like uh, grass butter. Oh, it's like Kerrygold? Yeah, yeah, Kerrygold oh, butter, okay. butter is really good for you. Um, it's, it's a grass so butter. I, I usually eat the cheese, the Kerrygold's cheese. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. No, yeah, so those are, that would be a good category. Those are the grass and veggies. Okay. Um, that would be way better than a margarine. These include because those things are low calorie, but it's the oil itself that causes the negative. So you can use a little bit of that butter to put on. Yeah, just like a little bit of butter, like um, half, a half a tablespoon, depending on how much potatoes, half a tablespoon of it, just put it on. Like it's, that's really good fat for your system. So it's actually better to use that to cook with, too. Yes, it is, yep. And then, okay. Yep, that's what we, we usually cook with ghee yeah. just because we can buy it there in containers and girls. But the idea is just like it's just butter pretty much. So it's just a little bit of ghee. We can buy them in like containers, so that's why I like usually like maybe scoop that out and try to cut off some of the stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? What about applesauce? Homemade applesauce? Great. Yeah. Not homemade, they're not probably homemade. Mm -hmm. it's, they're usually pretty sugar mm -hmm. Now you can probably get, find some that are unsweetened. unsweetened and look at it and see what other nutrients are in it. Um, but a lot of them that taste decent are usually have, have, have additives to them. So it, that depends. Look at the unsweetened, see what's on the back of the fence. Um, that would be my main thing. With that, homemade is awesome, but um, also homemade just can't cover sugar. Either, so my mom is homemade and she just loads it with brown sugar. Okay. So. The only thing I recommend extra, I don't recommend any extra weight training. We do plenty of weight training. Uh, the way our program is designed so is we need if you recovery time. So we need time in between weight training. But we'll, you can do like Monday, Tuesday, 
The key is like we're looking at a seven-day window. That's, window. Like, that's why we only recommend three workouts in a seven-day okay. window. Really. Yeah. In terms of weight training, like what we're doing, here. because we need recovery time in muscles to be built, and we need to make sure we don't create so much inflammation in the body <laughs> and cortisol in the body, which then naturally makes fat loss hard. So. However, if you guys have the time doing it daily or at day, the days that you're not here, so doing a 30 minute walk will make you wonders. Just walk. Oh, so Bicycle, walk, and not running. Not only do really don't recommend unless you're somebody that's always done a lot of running, but running causes a lot of inflammation in the body. So I wouldn't recommend bicycling is great, swimming is great if you're a swimmer. Um, walking 30 minutes a day, that extra, like, just, you know, just a nice pace walk. It's not the extra speed walker kind of walk. Just a nice pace walk for 30 minutes. That would do wonders for transformation. If you have the time to, like, extra weight training, you know, because we need that recovery time to rebuild. Yeah. That's why we can really push and say those numbers are real, because we need enough for recovery time. If you're always breaking down muscles, it takes you so long to rebuild, and you build muscle mass way slower. So even if you look at like a guy like Arnold Schwarzenegger, or the big bodybuilder, it's the reason that if you if you have never really seen a program, Arnold Schwarzenegger only trained his chest once a week. Yeah, he trained other muscle groups, but that muscle group got complete recovery until that next week. That's why he can build so much muscle. So what we do is we do more of a full body, so we break down more tissue, but we need a little bit more recovery time in between to make sure that you can get that maximum weight muscle gain during that time. Yeah. Um, so it's very important for that. Now, if you're gonna get more muscle gain in the beginning of our program than somebody that has been in our program longer, because we're gonna, there's a, an instant neurological effect of like doing this kind of so training, that will give you a quicker muscle gain. You can't, you can't always just put on, like every 28 days, you won't put on training muscle. Gain. That would make us a lot more over time, but in the first few yeah, months, so, you'll get really um, good results. Um, and it just has to do with like muscle tissue breakdown and how fast. Um, if you've been training here for a while, most people have a decent amount of yeah, muscle yeah. mass in the build. And don't worry about muscle mass, you're not gonna get like, yo, just check it, check it on this. But I think it's like you're going to get more muscular over time, you're going to get more defined over time, and over time, the bigger you get, it just takes longer to put on muscle mass because you've already hit your limitations with that. Okay. Good question. Yes. I would say if you can walk, please do walk or swim or bike. Okay. That would really help you just want to if the weather's nice. Taking your family out for a walk or ride your bike with your family, taking the dog for a walk would be really good for you. Doing it every day would be yeah. ideal, but realistically, every day that you're not working out here would be really good for you. The weekends are really good. Yeah, it's good for you to walk. Otherwise, guys, if you don't have any questions, you're good to go. Thank you for coming in. Like, we'll be here for all the all the stuff going along the way. Don't be afraid to ask us. Ask any of the coaches. If they don't know the answer, they're really good at finding the answer, which they'll probably just contact me um, inside the class. They'll contact me or Nathan, one of the two of us, and get back to it. But otherwise, we got. If we don't know the answer, and I'm not going to promise you know the answer to everything you say, but we'll find the answer for you. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, I got a few things on the resources and you're good.